Hi guys, it's Vin with Boris FX, and in this first of three tutorials for Vegas, I'm going to show you how to use the all-new BCC Particle Illusion to create this awesome flaming sword. So as a huge fan of Game of Thrones, you can imagine my excitement when Continuum 2019 reintroduced Particle Illusion, because you'd think a shot like this would be rather complicated. But I'm going to show you how to make quick work of this in Vegas Pro 16, so let's get started. Now to begin with, I have my night clip here. I also made sure to download and install the Boris Continuum 2019 particle emitters from the Boris FX website. Now this is a free installer that contains thousands of pretty awesome emitters and we're going to need one of them to complete this project. So once I've installed my emitters, I'm going to go to my video effects and drag BCC Particle Illusion onto my footage. Now there are a lot of options available here, but for this effect we're going to do pretty much everything inside of Particle Illusion itself. To do this, I'm going to click the Launch Particle Illusion button which will open up the UI. Now over here I have my stage. This is where I can place all of my emitters. If I want to change the composite mode, I can click here to select composite over black, checkerboard, a single still source frame, or the video itself. Now the middle panel will contain all of my emitters, and while Particle Illusion uses pre-made emitters, there is a significant amount of customization available to me, and we're going to take a closer look at that in just a moment. Now on the left here I have my preview window, and of course all of my emitters. So the first thing I want to do is move my CTI to a good point, right about here where he starts to grip that sword. That looks like a good spot. And this is where I'm going to be placing my emitter. Now the specific effect I want to use is called Flame Sword. And I could search through a couple thousand emitters, but it's a lot easier to just type it in here. Now if I want to get a quick preview of what that effect will look like, I can click and drag in the preview window. It's pretty cool, very responsive, and a great way to get a sense of the emitter before you apply it to a scene. Okay, so what I want to do when I've selected my emitter is click on the stage. Now because Flame Sword is a line emitter, meaning the particles are emitted along a line, I can click here to complete the effect. Particle Illusion will want to create more points, but since I don't need them, I'm just going to hit Escape to stick with the two that I already have. Well, one of the best things about BCC Particle Illusion is that Mocha Motion Tracking has been fully integrated into the plugin. For this effect, we're just going to use some old-fashioned auto animation. Now to make this easier, I'm going to dial down the opacity so I can see the sword under my particles. Something to note is that all of these parameters up here apply globally to my effect. Down here, I can adjust individual particle parameters, and we'll get to that shortly. Now for now, I want to begin auto-animating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the Auto Keyframe button on my stage. What this will do is create keyframes every time I make a change. With that in mind, I'm going to move my CTI forward a few frames, and then adjust the endpoints of my flame sword so that it matches the position of the sword itself. It doesn't have to be exact, but the closer you can get, the better. And that's why adjusting the opacity can make this a lot easier. Now I'm just going to keep doing that every few frames until I reach the end. Generally, what I'll do is scrub back and forth just to make sure that the effect is animating correctly and making adjustments as needed. Particle Illusion will smoothly auto-animate between the keyframes that are created. Now when it drops below the visible area of the frame, I can guesstimate the relative position. Since it's not seen, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I do like to have occasional moments where the top of the flame can be seen at the very edge of the frame, just so that we know it's still there. So what I'll do is I'll continue to go through the clip adjusting the position of the emitters, but rather than making you sit through all of that, I'm just going to speed things up a bit. Alrighty, so now that I've finished animating the emitter and got everything the way I like, I'm going to dial that opacity back up. Now you'll notice that when I do this, a graph suddenly appears. Particle Illusion will display an editable graph for any parameter that is animated. And because I have auto animation on, when I dialed the opacity up again, it created an animation. Now since I want the opacity to remain constant, I can just come over to my interpolation and change that to constant. The graph disappears because the opacity animation has been removed. Now I'm going to turn off auto animate, and this won't affect existing animations, but it will prevent me from accidentally animating something when I don't want to. Now if I play this back, it's looking pretty good. Don't worry about compositing just yet, we'll take care of that in a moment, but for now, what I want to do is just point out these parameters down here. If I twirl them open, I can make adjustments to the elements that make up the flame animation. So, for example, if I go into flame, I can adjust the size, life, velocity, etc. of the flames themselves. If I open up the properties, I can make adjustments to the shape image, which can then change the overall look of the fire. 
I can also open up the color parameter and adjust the gradient. For example, if I wanted to create something closer to the wildfire in Game of Thrones, I can do this. Now there are a lot of options available and I encourage you to explore, experiment, and really mold these emitters into something that's unique for you. But for this tutorial, however, I'm going to leave things at their default and save back out to the Vegas timeline. Now when I first apply back my fire, while cool, it's not really matching the scene. To fix this, I'm going to open up my composite subgroup. By default, the composite mode is set to direct, and what it does is it just takes what's produced in particle illusion and places it right on top of my footage. Now if I select alpha apply mode, I now have access to the traditional compositing modes. Screen, lighten, multiply, etc. In this case, I'm going to select add, and there you go. A very cool effect that looks far more complicated than it actually is. Now there are other things I can do to make this effect really pop. I've added an instance of BCC Turbulence onto the clip. This is a very cool filter that creates ripples and distortions across my image. What I want to do is select the preset Heat Haze from the drop-down menu. Next, I'm going to set a keyframe for Scale, Intensity, and Master Distortion at around the 307 mark. Then I'll back up a frame and reduce those values to zero. This will turn off the effect until the sword bursts into flames. Now since I don't want the turbulence to affect the entire image, I'm going to go down to my pixel chooser group and launch Mocha. What I've done here is created a very, very simple mask around the sword and adjusted it manually to follow the movements. Now there's no need to track the whole thing since with all the shifting particles, it's going to be very difficult. Simply go in and manually adjust the mask the same way we did for the flames themselves. It doesn't have to be exact, but it should follow the sword as it moves through the scene. When satisfied, save out and open up the Pixel Chooser Mask subgroup. Give it a little bit of feathering so that it blends in nicely, and there you go. Now in the final version, I added an orange color solid and animated a mask to act as light reflecting off his armor. Feel free to experiment, add new things, and customize this to really create the look you want. But ultimately, in the end, that's all there is to it. I'm Vin Morreale with Boris FX, and for more great tutorials, don't forget to check out the Boris FX website. Take care.